Well, hello everybody. Another episode of Seize Your Business. I'm Jim Wazak from Success Enhancement and Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. And today we have an interesting guest, Bob Podgorski. Bob is a friend of mine and I've known for probably about 10 years. And uh, he runs um, job search support groups for the village of uh, Elk Grove Village and, uh, and Schaumburg. And today, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, establishing your identity as a consultant. A lot of people uh, would like to have a business of their own, and uh, sometimes you can just show your expertise, and that turns into a business. So, uh, Bob, thank you for, for being here. My pleasure. Thank you both. I appreciate being here. So tell us a little bit about your background, Bob. Well, 38 years uh, in senior human resources positions, uh, and uh, through uh, part of my career I had my own consulting firm, and uh, more recently, uh, over the last uh, five years, I uh, re-ignitioned that uh, and had the opportunity to provide uh, consulting services for corporations, companies, not-for-profit organizations, uh, and uh, started working with uh, the Chambers of Commerce doing uh, work with uh, small businesses uh, to help them to do a better job uh, with their businesses. And uh, then the uh, small business development uh, um, organization that's part of SBA asked me to come in and do a seminar uh, on consulting as a career option. Uh, and I've been doing that now on a regular basis for the SBDC office at Powerful College. So you're consulting on how to be a consultant. That's pretty meta. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting, yes. yes. So, Bob, let's say a person is, uh, for whatever reason, thinking they want to do something uh, on their own. What are kind of some of the things they should think about in uh, determining if they want to be a, an independent consultant? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, it's uh, pretty important that they have a brand, uh, that they understand what it is that they're selling, uh, that the, uh, the service uh, that they're providing, uh, the consulting activities that they're providing has a uh, audience, uh, so they need to know that uh, there is a market. They need to do a little bit of market research uh, to determine that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they need to have a pitch that provides uh, the value added uh, certainly for the uh, customer or client that they might be pitching to. So those are kind of the starting points is what is it that I have that I can sell uh, effectively? Uh, what kind of value can I bring? And um, are is there an audience uh, out there that would actually pay for this service? Okay. Okay. Pitch seems to be the toughest part of that. I, I have friends who have kind of dabbled in trying to get into consulting and it's they, they've not move forward with it because they've sat down with a couple of people and people who really needed the services, but they ended up not hiring them because they didn't have, you know, whatever materials together that they, they needed to show a concrete plan and it just seemed a little bit ephemeral for, uh, to pay money for. Exactly. And part of the problem that a lot of consultants have or people who want to get into consulting is that uh, they may have a technical uh, or particular area of specialty that uh, they might be able to sell uh, and that may be of interest in terms of a client buying that those services, but when it comes to the pitch itself, they don't know quite how to do it. Uh, but most of the consultants that I've seen who are starting out in business need help and guidance into how to put together an effective proposal. Uh, that's really a, a very concrete thing that you can place in the hands of a client that they can look at, they can mull over, they can create their questions, come back to you with those questions, and then in your answers, show them even greater expertise. So it's in that proposal stage that I see a number of, of consultants uh, failing or unfortunately not getting the level of business that they potentially could based on the skills that they have and the specialties that they have. So, so it's in that, that disposal. So where might somebody go to you know, learn or see some templates of uh, how do they learn to write a good uh, proposal? Well, there's a number of books out there. I, I always uh, uh, start out by saying if there's uh, one place that you can go, it's certainly the public library. And uh, every public library has a business section where you can find one book after another on, on consulting. Uh, but 
part and parcel of the problem is that many of those books are very complicated. They really get into such phenomenal detail that you would need to be in a consulting capacity that has 15 consultants or 20 consultants uh, to, okay. to utilize that level uh, of proposal. But there's a much more simplified approach that uh, consultants can use. A simplified approach really starts with uh, an exceptional statement of work. Uh, that statement of work is basically what you have learned from listening and talking with the client about what their needs are, uh, what their problems are, what the problems are that they perceive in terms of, of uh, the, the issues on the table, and then being able to, to co uh, co communicate that in an effective form. Uh, within that proposal so that when they look at it, they could say, yeah, right, that's exactly what's happening. That's what I'm trying to solve. That's, and they get excited just by looking at the statement of work, understanding that you now know what they're faced with and you now may be that solution for them. Then you need to uh, be able to provide them uh, with uh, the credentials. So part of the proposal is your credentials to make sure that your credentials match what it is that the problem is you're going to be solving. And another part of it is time and cost. Uh, you want to be able to uh, understand the, the ramifications of the problem. It, it's, it's like project planning, mm -hmm. Jim. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Kevin, if you were to lay out a program of some kind or a project of some kind, what you're going to look at is you're going to look at a, a series of things. You're going to be looking at what resources are you going to need. You're going to be looking at what equipment, what size facilities, uh, what amenities, desk, chair, whatever it is you're going to need to help solve the problem. You're going to be looking at uh, the various aspects of, of um, uh, coordinating within the organization. There are a whole series of things that have to come into play before you can give uh, the client an answer as to how long this is going to take. But once you know how long it's going to take, then it's a matter of understanding how much you charge for your services. And that's the second biggest problem that consultants have is, what do I charge mm -hmm. for the services that I provide? To back up a little bit, sorry to catch you no, up. Just, okay. um, the, I've been I, cut I, off by better people than you. So <laughs> I've, I've often been in a position where I've been looking desperately to hire a good consultant. And and I've never hired one. And the problem that I had was with the, the statement of work. You know, I, what, what you said that spoke to me is that the, the consultants that I've met with, ready to hire them that I haven't ended up hiring, um, basically didn't boil it down. I had some very specific issues that I wanted dealt with. I was willing to pay for that and pay a good rate for it, but I didn't want to pay just a random retainer sure. and not knowing what, I, or, or just a flat monthly fee and not know what I was getting out of that. Mm -hmm. So if you, as, as a potential client of a consultant, that statement of work, you know, if they had taken maybe an hour to put that together as opposed to just kind of throwing me their, you know, regular form, I'd there's certainly several times where I would have hired a consultant if they had just been specific about exactly what problems they were going to solve. Yeah, and, and that's that's what I've found uh, uh, as I've done this consulting as a career option uh, or as a small business program for various organizations uh, is that uh, those people who want to make that leap into entrepreneurial uh, activities uh, oftentimes just don't quite know how to pull it all together. And while this would seem like an administrative task, uh, there's a lot of thinking that has to go into it and you have to also understand the terrain or the environment that you're going into uh, because while you can talk about the statement of work uh, one statement of work um, may be the same as a, a, for a small company as it is for a large company in other words clients okay um, but the nuances uh, come in terms of the size of the organization, uh, the communications links within the organization, uh, how complex their internal structure is. Uh, there's a number of different factors that have to come into play when you're providing that statement of work. And so it's not just a matter of, of restating the problem uh, that the individual has, it's also taking into account the organizational um, uh, environment, if you will, that you have to get into that statement of work as well so that when they read it, there's a realism to their specific environment.
-hmm. and, and that's uh, kind of a nuance, if you will, where um, uh, the statement of work sometimes fails. You know, I can uh, relate to that. I can tell you a story. Very early in my uh, consulting career, I got hired by, by a company, and the, uh, the father, who was still kind of the informal leader of the company, he wanted me to help his son be more effective in his day-to-day -day duties. His son wanted me to work on a financial planning tool that their their various locations could use. So uh, so we did the we did the latter, and of course the father wasn't happy because it was something totally different. So I, I think part of the um, reason why that good proposal or statement of work is clear, because then everybody knows what's. Um, what's actually going on. Well, you bring up a good point, and that's the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? So, uh, and, and sometimes there's a lot of ambiguity. Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of consulting, is to be able to deal with ambiguity, because there will always be some level of ambiguity somewhere within trying to solve that problem. Um, but, but nonetheless, uh, the, the issue is who are the stakeholders? Who are the people who are involved, uh, both, both directly and peripherally, to feeling the pain of this particular problem uh, and, and, and have a stake in the solution to that problem because you really need to talk to them as well. You need to understand where they're coming from and you, you drew a, 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 a terrific analogy with, with your, uh, your uh, uh, example and that was that um, you had two people both who are, are looking at something and one wanting this and one wanting that and I had a similar situation uh, the owner brought me in uh, to do a particular job, uh, and as I was in the process of doing that job, uh, the son, who was the president, who would eventually inherit the company, learned about the assignment, uh, and he had totally different perspective on, on things. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result of not understanding that he was a stakeholder, uh, I wound up losing a client uh, that was a very good client of mine. Uh, but then eventually Papa retired and uh, mm -hmm. the son took over. But um, uh, again, uh, there was you have to understand as much as you can who all the stakeholders are. You know, um, people I think like hearing success stories. Do you have uh, one you could share this with somebody who uh, got, kind of got into this and it really worked out? well for him or her? Yeah, uh, the, the wonderful thing is that uh, I've, I've had the privilege uh, and, I, and I really feel Quite, quite good about it. Uh, I've launched a number of careers in consulting. Uh, and there is one individual by the name of Dave Amos. Uh, and uh, Dave is a, a good friend of mine uh, now. Uh, we became uh, acquainted through That's some... not the guy from Famous Amos. Quick, no, it's not. I no, thought I could get free no, truckers. <laughs> yeah, right. wouldn't that be nice? That would be great. <laughs> but uh, Dave uh, uh, came to me and, and said uh, that he was moving away from doing some uh, of the, uh, the corporate kind of things and wanted to get into consulting. He attended one of my consulting as a career option workshops um, and uh, he did not get discouraged and by the way I try to discourage people within the first five minutes mm -hmm. uh, and if I do they're better off mm -hmm. uh, if I don't then they've got a, a, a task ahead of them but it can be a lot of fun Dave was one of those he wanted to take it to the next level uh, Dave was a specialist in safety and he launched his, his safety uh, consulting business and training, safety training consulting business, uh, inevitably being picked up by the National Safety Council uh, here in Chicago. Uh, that sends him all over the United States doing training programs in various uh, venues of uh, everything from, from uh, uh, vehicle training to uh, safety training mm -hmm. uh, to workplace training and, and just a variety of things. Uh, as a result of having done that you know, for various organizations, other organizations have now called him and asked him to come in uh, and do special programs for them. So he has launched his own business. Uh, he did so uh, in not at a tender age. Um, Dave uh, it was over 50 when he did this, uh, and uh, he is the most uh, joyous individual that I know based on the fact that he has now realized his dream of being an independent consultant mm -hmm. in demand uh, and having something that he knows exceptionally well, uh, having branded himself in that yeah. field uh, and being able to sell it to clients. Uh, I like that phrase, in demand. I think that's what everybody... Uh, 
yes. everybody shoots for. So you mentioned you tried to discourage people within the first five minutes or yes. so, and I, I'd imagine that it's a really <coughs> tough industry to start getting into before you build the client base. Oh yes. Because I mean. It, in my industry, I have like a 75 or 80 percent conversion rate on my free consultations, and that's a half hour of my time. But for a consultant, they not only have to, the clients are a little harder to find, they're fewer and far between, and then once they find those clients, after investing a bunch of time in that, then they have to meet with them probably several times and put a lot of work into preparing this proposal, and the conversion rate probably isn't all that high. Well, that's part of what I go through in, 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 the, um, in the presentation that I do, which is about a three-hour for the uh, uh, Small Business Development uh, uh, Council. Uh, when I do it for, for them, the first five minutes, uh, one of the things that I talk about is um, be prepared, uh, first of all, for no income in the first year because you're really kicking your business off. You're getting the rec you're trying to get some recognition out there. You're trying to identify your market and penetrate your market. Uh, you're trying to get that visibility. The next thing, of course, is the variable uh, income, even once you start getting clients. Your income is not going to be steady. Your income is going to be high in one month and down the next, uh, and it may not come back up for another five or six months. Uh, and so there, there is a lot of this feast or famine, particularly in the first year of operation, that you have to be cognizant of. You can't just simply walk into it and say, well, today I'm going to be a consultant and start earning money immediately. Those, there's very few people who do that. So it's it's really a, a, a business that uh, has a, uh, uh, a, a lot of issues associated with it, but if you can get through that and become successful at it, uh, it can be one of the greatest things in the world. And uh, having my own business in consulting uh, has provided me with an opportunity to do exactly what I love. And when we're doing something we love, we're not really working there. That's we, right. Yeah. That's right. That's so. right. So other than the, the statement of work, and, and you, you gave us some of the elements of, of a good proposal, you, you talked about setting fee structures. Can you talk about that right. a little bit? Sure. Uh, it's, uh, first of all, it's not an easy thing. Uh, before, you, before you answer, sure. let me just interject, because uh, you, perhaps you had commented on the, the three different approaches I've seen. One is an hourly rate, one is a project price, and one is a retainer. So I know those are things that people usually think about. Yeah, exactly. And and so when you talk about pricing, you're talking about a variety of things. And so it might be time and cost um, associated with it. Uh, but it also can can be um, it can be a retainer uh, with a, a um, uh, kicker at the end. So there's a number of different ways that people can structure how to provide the, the, the payments. But it's what are the payments? What, what is the amount that you should charge for your services? And the, the only way that you can really determine what that is is to try to get a handle on what the competition is doing. So one place to start is let's say there's a corporation and a corporation hires these kinds of people. There is a certain wage structure for that size company and that kind of environment. Um, and now you understand if you were an employee, this is what you would make, plus about another 25% uh, on, on uh, benefits and other kinds of things. So you, you basically have some structure there. Then you put that aside and then you go out and you try to find the competitors that would be uh, similar uh, and try to determine what their costing uh, and their pricing is and, and then you you can put that down and now you have uh, basically um, uh, two things that you can look at uh, that give you some kind of an idea uh, there's also most people who get into consulting are in a profession um, that they've done before perhaps for a corporation and as a result of that, they could go back to friends and associates and supervisors and leaders in those corporations they formerly came out of and say to them, does this sound like uh, the right price if you were to hire a consultant doing this kind of work? And they can give you some feedback. And now you put that on the table and you regurgitate that along with everything else uh, and out will come some type of fee structure. Now, I always tell uh, consultants uh, uh, that they can't look at cost or price alone. Uh, they really need to look at a number of different factors when they decide to take a job or go after a job. 
And so one of those things is, is this an opportunity to learn something? Is this an opportunity to grow in your profession, in your consulting capacity? Will you use a new software package, as an example? Uh, will you be in a new environment uh, that which will tax your, your problem solving or stretch your problem solving and give you the opportunity to now fill in a blank, perhaps, that was in your consulting um, uh, cadre of, of uh, uh, services. Uh, and then uh, lastly, will this assignment provide you with a, a, a plethora of new contacts and new connections? in a new industry sure. and so as you look at your pricing look at some of these other things of what it gives you in terms of helping to build your business and and basically grow your capability and your ability to be able to serve customers and clients perhaps on a more broader basis which then gives you more marketing opportunities okay. so that's i mean it's a long answer i'm sorry <laughs> but, but that's the way i would do it do you find that uh, consultants are more successful when they have a um, written, basically, program that they're going to take the client? So, like we, when I've when I've seen people that I was really considering signing up with, it was because they had a "here's our process," you know, and, and it was in writing. It wasn't mm -hmm. something that they were experimenting with me on, and it, you know, I'm going to take you through this process, and each stage is going to cost so much. It's kind of like a statement of mm -hmm. work. But it's something where the, the client sees your face. Right, face. Is that something that you highly recommend doing, or is that is that different based on the industry? No, actually, uh, uh, it, it, it's a it's fifty fifty. It's a two sided coin. Uh, for some organizations, uh, having that kind of thing is is exactly what they need, exactly what they want. Uh, in other cases, uh, the organization looks at it and says, "Hey, wait a minute, we're unique here. We're not a That's cookie a cutter point. situation." Um, and 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 so, the thing that I always look at is and and recommend to consultants, and I get many calls from consultants who get into these situations. They say, um, I, I've got a client, uh, but there's some uniquenesses here. There's some things that, and, and there's a lot of ambiguity that I'm not quite getting all of the, the information. Or they know what the problem is, but they don't know where the cause of the problem stems from. Uh, and I'm going to have to get in there, and I'm going to have to dig below the surface, and I'm going to have to do it, and so on. And so a cookie-cutter type of program may fit that or may not fit that where another organization has a, a pretty much black and white problem uh, and a cookie cutter situation could fit that. So it's really, it's, it's really a, uh, you almost have to go by each assignment uh, and look at each assignment as a unique uh, entity and, and see what it's going to take uh, and for you to get to the point of, of resolution. But there's one other thing uh, that's important for consulting and maybe this is kind of like the, 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 the final point, and that is uh, that the, the uh, solution that you provide uh, has to be of a level that can be realistically implemented. 